what the freak is up welcome to my channel if you're new my name is autumn i am a registered nurse over here on this side of youtube we like to talk all things health wellness lifestyle and of course nursing and in today's video i'm going to be weighing out for you the pros and cons of working as a registered nurse in the operating room now i am no longer with the or however i did spend a significant amount of time working there originally i started as an rn resident as a new grad in the operating room i worked there for about six months as both a scrub and a circulator prior to making my decision to leave however I am not biased, um, although I did not find a forever home in the OR. There are some really, really great things about that job, as well as some really, really not so great things. So I am here to explain both of those to you, as well as some things that I wish I had known starting out there as a new grad. Maybe you're a new graduate yourself or you're a transition nurse, go ahead and wait until the end of this video because I am gonna touch on all of those things and then some. Now, spending six months in a specialty might not seem like a lot of time to you. However, it was certainly more than enough time for me to kind of develop a general understanding of how the operating room runs and how it works. And I definitely feel like I've acquired enough knowledge and experience to be able to share with the next person some things that they can expect if they're getting themselves into something such as the OR because it is completely different from any other type of nursing. Really quickly too, I do just kind of want to touch on what type of operating room I worked in because I didn't know this, but I guess there's different types of ORs that you can work in. You can do private practice where it's just you and another doctor. You can work in an outpatient surgery center or you can work in a main hospital OR. I worked in a main hospital OR. We were a level one trauma. So primarily we did day surgeries, but we did get our occasional add-on. However, most of them were for the most part pretty routine. We were the main OR though. So we did everything from general scheduled surgeries to amputation to ortho, neuro, craniotomies. I mean, we did, we truly did it all. We had about 19 rooms, so we were a pretty big OR. Um, not the biggest, but we were expanding too at the time. Pro number one, the schedule. Working in the operating room, you have an extremely flexible schedule. When I was starting out as an orientee, as an RN resident, I was working Monday through Friday, five days a week, eight hour shifts. You can actually work this shift once you're off of orientation too, if you're a day person and you just prefer that kind of set routine. However, you also have the option to work four 10 hour shifts or three 12 hour shifts. In my opinion, this was really, really nice. Usually starting out as a new grad or even just in any unit in nursing in general, you're not always that lucky. For the most part, they'll probably try to throw you on a night shift, especially if you're starting out. So having the option to work days was super, super important for me. I do not like to, it's not that I hate nights. I just, I definitely function better in the day. I would argue that most people probably do. So it's nice that you have that option right off the bat. Most people at my hospital enjoyed working the 410s. They found that to be the most suitable. If you think about it, surgeries are typically taking place during the day, right? Like what doctor or surgeon is going to schedule his surgery is starting at 7 p.m. Like it's just probably not gonna happen. So majority of our scheduled surgeries did take place during the day. That is why in the OR, you will find that you always have a day shift open. Now, if you're a night owl, fear not, you can work night shift too. You usually just wanna have some experience under your belt first. So they usually don't opt for their new grads to be put on night shift until after about having a year or two experience under their belt. On night shift, you have much less resources. The pro to this is that you will become very close knit with your team but it's just not super ideal, especially if you're new and you kind of need help. Like right now on day shift, I could open my door, go out in the hall and grab about six nurses if I needed help. A night shift, you might not be that lucky. There's a lot less resources, so just keep that in mind. This kind of leads me into my next pro. Pro number two, your teammates. You know, this may possibly be a con for some people. It was a con for me at times, but um, you will become very, very close knit with some people in the operating room. No doubt about it, you will make new friends, meet people that may even become lifetime friends. This is a huge, huge pro because who doesn't love people that they can connect with both in and out of work? I feel that the OR can certainly be a team environment. You just have the option of becoming really close with some of these people and you're working with them day in and day out. Sometimes you'll be in the same room for an entire 12 hour shift. So you will become very close with some people and some people, you know, maybe not, but that's okay. But either way, being a part of a team can be very rewarding. And so um, I would definitely consider this a pro. On the contrary, big personalities in the OR, huge con. Like I said in my previous video, in case you haven't seen it, I touch on some of the reasons why I chose to leave the OR. One of them being there were some nasty, horrible, horrendous personalities there. There were burnt out nurses, there were bullies, you have surgeons that you have to deal with. Sometimes your anesthesiologist might not be the most pleasant human being on the planet. Having to deal with this multitude of personalities can actually be a huge, huge con, especially because you are in a high stress environment. You need a team that's able to work efficiently together. And if everyone around you sucks, how are you gonna get anything done, you know? So like that can be a huge, huge con. I'm the type of person where I can handle dealing with 
big personalities, but kind of like you can only take so much before you recognize that your work environment may not be the healthiest. And so that's an important decision you have to take upon yourself to consider as well. So I would say the fact that you are working with a wide variety of people can either be both a pro and a con, just something to consider. This next one may also be a pro or a con, depending on the type of person that you are. For me, it was certainly, certainly a con, but I can understand why for some people it would be a pro. And that is your patient is asleep. For me personally, this was a huge, huge con. The reason I got into nursing in the first place was to make a difference in patients' lives, be involved in the community with their families, things of that nature. And when my patient is sleeping, um, I'm not getting any of that. Really, you're getting none of it. You have probably five to 10 minutes absolute maximum with your patient before you roll them back and get them ready for surgery. The majority of the job responsibilities for you as the circulating nurse are gonna consist of plugging things in, making sure you have all the equipment ready for surgery, operating robots potentially, Sounds a lot cooler than it was in my opinion. I really missed that patient interaction. So if you are someone who craves those more deep, meaningful relationships, um, the OR probably isn't the place for you to get that satisfaction as a nurse. Now, on the contrary, this did have some benefits. It was nice if you were starting out as a new grad because you had the potential to practice your skills without, you know, the patient necessarily giving you a hard time or being in any pain or anything like that. Didn't have to worry about those things. So there was a lot of opportunity for you to learn and grow during the surgery or during prep. But a lot of times you guys, patients are scared and nervous because they're going into surgery. I mean, this is a really big deal and this is a potentially life-changing event for most people. So it's understandable why sometimes in surgery, they're not in the best mood to begin with. And I don't know, I guess I just always felt that that was our job as a nurse to kind of make an otherwise unpleasant experience a better one. At the same time, I never really experienced that many difficult patients being in surgery. Usually they were pretty accommodating, pretty understanding. They trusted you as their nurse to kind of just get the ball rolling. And most of them, you know, for the most part, they just wanted to get it over with. So I didn't really have too many issues when it came to that. The type of person that I think would really enjoy not having as much patient care or interaction is a nurse who probably already has years of experience under their belt or it maybe is just burnt out from patient care. I think that type of person would love this field and probably find the OR to maybe even be a forever home. But for the average person or the average nurse starting out getting, you know, kind of getting their feet wet, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Another huge pro is the nurse to patient ratio. So typically on the floor, you are one nurse and you may have five to seven patients that you need to take care of at one time. In the OR, not gonna lie, it's really nice. You only have one patient and they are your primary focus throughout the entire operation. Additionally, you have help with you. So it's not even just you caring for them. You have your anesthesiologist who is your primary resource for kind of overseeing the care of that patient. Then you have the surgeon, you have your surgical tech. Sometimes you'll have PAs or surgical assists helping out throughout the surgery. You are never ever alone, especially when you're new. This can be really, really nice. It's kind of like a weight off of your shoulders knowing that, you know, everything doesn't fall back on you 100%. There's other people in the room too. Again, there's help everywhere, guys. You are never, ever alone in the OR. Another huge plus was the scrubs. Now, for me, this was like a pro and a con. I would say it was a pro because you don't have to buy and purchase separate scrubs for work. Um, the OR will provide sterile scrubs for you. You can pretty much wear whatever you want to work. Most days, I wore my pajamas because I started at like 6 in the morning. The scrubs are completely sterile. You change into them once you get into the locker room. The benefit of this is that you can actually change your scrubs multiple times throughout the day. As you know, as a nurse, we can be exposed to um, some pretty not so clean things such as body fluids, saliva, urine, feces, blood, etc. So it was nice to have the option to kind of change this out throughout the day, keep yourself clean, keep yourself good. This was a con for me because when I would walk around the hospital, I'm not gonna lie, I would see other nurses from other units wearing like their cute scrubs and they looked so cute and so pretty. I was always like, I wanna be you so bad. But beggars can't be choosers, I guess, you know? I was like, they literally look like they're on Grey's Anatomy and I look like a lunch lady, but it's fine. Speaking of blood and guts and urine and feces and body fluids, etc., I would consider this to be a con and I kinda hope you do too. Obviously as nurses, you know, we know what we sign up for. We kinda get ourselves into this mess, if you will. But in the operating room, you will be exposed to some extremely gory and vigorous things. You will see things you have never dreamt of seeing in your life. You will learn all about the anatomy and see the complete opened up inside of the human body. So just brace yourself for that. Not everyone knows how they will react when they handle such a thing because it's not something that you see every day. And it's certainly not something you see on your average floor or as a floor nurse. So it is a lot different. Um, but for me, it was extremely interesting. I mean, I, I honestly loved it. To this day, I love it. I'm fascinated by 
the anatomy of the human body. It's so cool and amazing the way our bodies work. I would say if you're interested in this kind of thing, which as a nurse, you probably are, at least a little bit, um, really take full advantage. And if you're new and you're starting in the OR, really get in there and try to learn because a lot of doctors and surgeons will take the time to explain to you what they're doing and how they're doing it. You'll get a chance to do some pretty cool things. One of the doctors actually let me feel all the way down to the aorta. It was amazing and I'm so grateful for him taking the time out of his surgery to let me do something like that. So scrub when you can too. Take the opportunity to scrub because that's how you really get up close and personal. As a circulator you are more observing you know around the sterile field so you're not really in there in the action. I'm making this sound like it's a pro. Okay it kind of is okay but the reason I say it's a con is because you are dealing with things in such a different way than you would on the floor. You will be handed off specimens, body parts, things of that nature. Again, things not the average person sees on a daily basis. So just keep in mind that you may get more than just blood and guts and bone tissue spilled on you. And this is just me being as raw as I possibly can be with you. You know, I've had like, I've had formalin from specimens spilled onto my wrists and things like that and i mean you can be as covered up as possible but things just happen sometimes so just kind of um just be mindful of that it gets wild in the or it really does another con would be the surgeons and i do touch on this in a previous video but surgeons are not always the nicest people you guys um they're in a high stress environment but so are you and sometimes they forget that and they have a tendency to kind of lash out on you especially in the or because it's just a whole different story you're not working on the floor, you know, you're not surrounded by other patients, other nurses. It's not necessarily a controlled environment. I guess it's controlled chaos, so to speak, but the surgeons are very, very vulnerable when they are in their actual working setting. So don't tolerate their disrespect. That's not what I'm saying, but anticipate that they will probably be moody and you don't have to deal with that. You can always talk to your management about it and kind of rat them out. I mean, I would because at the end of the day, this is your workspace too, and you have to come to work in a healthy environment. So if a surgeon is ever consistently, you know, acting a certain type of way, make sure you let your management know about it because most of the time they are contracted to your hospital and you do have a lot of say about, you know, who you guys allow to work there as a unit. You have power soon. I don't want you to ever forget that. Okay, while we're on the cons, I think I might just try to rapid fire off some of the cons really quick. Because for me, honestly, there were more cons than pros. Hence why I left. Another con is the downtime. Now, some people may find this a pro if you are not a person who likes to be on your feet all the time, critically thinking, engaged, active. Not to say that you won't do all of those things in the OR, but there is a lot of downtime too. Once you set up your surgery, things tend to get less busy, and this is typically the time where the circulator will start to chart. For me, this drove me absolutely insane because I like to be moving 24 seven. I mean, sometimes those doctors and surgeons will be working for hours and if I was all caught up on my charting, don't get me wrong, there's always something to do in the OR, but I just, I hate to say it, but I was bored a lot of the time. I was really bored. When there was nothing going on, it got boring quick. Another con is that this is a physically demanding job. Granted, most areas of nursing are pretty physically demanding, let's be real, but you are moving heavy equipment, you are pushing beds around. I mean, this is a physically demanding job, so if you ever plan on you know, if you're a woman and you plan on getting pregnant while you're working in the OR, I would I would reconsider. Not to say you can't do it, but I would maybe look for a job that is a little less physically demanding because this can be very strenuous at times. This thing is tough on your body, but the OR, a lot more physically demanding than you think, especially if you scrub. You're gonna be standing for hours and hours and standing in one spot is actually incredibly painful. Just something to think about. Invest in some good compression socks. My advice to you, nurse to nurse. Another con is freaking freezing in the OR. Okay, if you're a person that runs warm, maybe you would thrive in this environment, but the rest of us, ice cubes, okay? In case you were unfamiliar, the ORs are kept at a certain temperature to prevent infectious disease or bacteria from thriving in otherwise warm climates and environments. So the OR is pretty chilly. Also, when you leave the actual operating rooms, the hallways themselves are constantly filtering air to prevent infection and to keep it a sterile field. So the whole freaking thing is freezing. I mean, first time I walked in there, I was like, Sheesh, am I in the right unit? Like, hold on, I think I might be in the morgue. Yo, it is freaking freezing in there. Like, no joke, you guys, I'm not exaggerating. There would be nurses who would use the heated blankets that we typically give to our patients once we bring them into our room. There would literally be nurses walking around the OR holding this around their shoulders, tying it around their waist, because it is legit that cold in there. I don't know the actual temperature that it's kept at, but some surgeons like it really, really cold. Trust me, they will know if you are even a degree off. They will walk in that room and they will let you know that you better turn that temperature down. And if you are already cold like me, girl, 
get a whole new job. Just, matter of fact, move to Arizona. Just never go to the OR. We all getting hypothermia, okay? Another con is that things can get pretty repetitive in the OR. I have heard people say, oh, every day is different. You know, it's so exciting, this and that. I... I disagree respectfully. Um, once you kind of get a basic surgery down, everything is relatively the same. The way that you prep for that surgery, usually pretty much the same. There may be some minor changes based on your patient. It's really case by case basis, but the concept and the principle of the surgery is actually relatively the same. And so once you kind of get down how a laparoscopic gallbladder removal goes, usually you can, you can anticipate what's gonna be expected. And that's the whole point of the OR is anticipating, 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 whether that is the surgeon's needs or how the surgery is gonna go. Granted, there are things that happen and things can go wrong, but if you guys are, you know, if you have a good team, hopefully that doesn't happen. The goal is to prevent those things. And if they do happen, you know, you know what to do to get it done and to fix it right away. Surgery is very dangerous. There are lots of risks with it and you want that patient to be as safe as possible. Once you kind of learn the way one surgery goes in a specific modality, you can kind of guess how it will go. And for me, this was just really repetitive and got really boring really fast. Once I, you know, learned the surgeries, I was kind of like, okay, I'm good. Like, um, this kind of feels routine to me. And I did not like that. I mean, you can only see so many tonsils get removed before you're like, I'm good, <laughs> you know. We are just gonna keep it going with the cons. Another con for me and for most people was the call schedule. It really sucks being on call. Now there is the opportunity to make a little bit extra cash being on call, so that's always nice. I think at my hospital, you did get paid $7 even just for sitting at home the days that you were on call. But give or take, I mean, it was, it was probably like 50-50 chance that you were getting called in. And if you were already working, let's say you worked a 12 hour shift and you were on call that day, you are expected to stay well past your 12 hour shift. If you're a Monday through Friday type of person, you might get called in on a Saturday. And so now you're working six days a week and you only have one day off. So that's something to consider. You can switch with other people, you know, if you have something planned, but typically you are expected to work at the very least two Saturdays out of the month or every other weekend. Like I said, you can make extra money with it, but work-life balance is very important to me and I did not like having to be on call at all. It's all fun and games until you get woken up out of your sleep at 3 a.m. to do a gallbladder removal. Pros and cons, pros and cons. This next part is going to be my advice to new graduates who are looking to enter the operating room. A lot of these things are gonna be things that I truly wish that someone had told me. Now, I am a person who likes to learn things the hard way, and maybe you are too. Some people have to just experience things for themselves before they can actually make a definitive decision, and I will always, always recommend that. At the end of the day, I do wanna recommend shadowing at least four to five times before you, you know, even apply anywhere at all, because you really wanna get a feel for what you're gonna be doing on the job. And had I known, it's possible that I would have cho chose a different modality first. My first piece of advice would be really spend some time with yourself. Analyze who you are, why you became a nurse in the first place, and what it is that you want from a career as a nurse. At the end of the day, you have to be fulfilled with the work that you're doing. And in the operating room, I think a big problem that a lot of new grads have is that kind of expect one thing and then they get another. In the OR, you are not going to really have the time to form meaningful relationships with your patients. You're not going to get that real in-depth patient interaction. You might not have a lot of time talking to their families. Everything in the OR is time-oriented. It is go, 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 at least where I worked at. And so if you are looking or craving, you know, a deeper meaning out of life or maybe having that more impactful interpersonal experience, I do not think that the OR is for you. That's not to say that it won't be for you. You certainly may find a place with it but I think you might excel and thrive in a different specialty first, and I would encourage other areas of nursing before you go to the OR. In my experience in the operating room, it has been primarily filled with nurses who already had that patient care experience and they knew it wasn't for them or they had had enough of it, so they were fine where they were at in the OR. I remember when I was in nursing school when things got really hard, I had a journal and I would write down in the journal all of my dreams, what my hopes were for the future, where I saw myself in five to 10 years, what I wanted to be doing as a nurse and what I thought my purpose was. I think whatever you do in life, it should come from your heart and it's really important to know your why. Nursing can be really challenging and really hard too, no matter what specialty you're in. So always remember why you're doing something and make sure you have that fire behind you and you, know, you have that motivation to keep you going when things get really, really rough because they will get rough no matter where you're at. Another thing that is important to know as a new grad is how long your orientation is. So you will be on orientation probably for about nine months. I know some are shorter, some are like six to nine months, but honestly, even at the nine month mark, you will probably just begin to feel 
confident with your work and acclimated. The OR is completely different from any other nursing specialty. As I've said, you will be starting from the bottom up. You are not going to use anything that you have learned in nursing school, practically none of it. Um, you will become very proficient with sterile technique. You will learn how to pass instruments, things of that nature. You will learn all about machinery and different types of tools and equipment that are used in the OR, but as far as like actual nursing skills, you're really not gonna be doing any of that. I mean, you can help start IVs if you ask, but again, you have to go out of your way to ask to assist your anesthesiologist. I think I've done a couple Foley's and that's about it, you guys. I mean, you really do not do a lot. You don't even give meds. Most of the meds you will pass off to your surgical tech and they will then draw up and hand off to the surgeon who will then pass the meds during surgery. Your anesthesiologist may administer meds too, but as far as you, you will not be doing any of that nursing care. Some people found this extremely attractive about the OR. I thought that I would, but I quickly came to realize that it was important for me to utilize those skills that I learned in nursing school. Use it or lose it, you know? And I, I just, that information was so valuable to me. I did not want to forget all of the pertinent things that I learned in school. And I certainly wanted to put to use what I had learned because I was so fresh into the field. I think as a new grad, this is really important to, to just get out there and get your feet wet so that later on in life, you aren't regretting it or wishing you did. You know, you can just get that out of your system first. I think that's a problem that a lot of people, myself included, had when starting in the OR. Again, your orientation, very, very long. Mine was Monday through Friday, five days a week for about nine months. Now, granted, I did decide that enough was enough for me at the six month mark, and I am very, very happy with my decision to leave. I think it's important to know that it's a huge commitment. I mean, it is a lot of learning, you guys. Like again, it's pretty much like you're in school all over again. They don't call it a residency for no reason. You will be full-time five days a week. At the end of your orientation, you have to take practically another NCLEX. I call it the NCLEX 2.0. It's just surgery version. So you will be taking an AORN test, 150 questions. Throughout your time in orientation too, you'll be completing different modules. If your hospital or organization is affiliated with AORN, which I think most of them are now, you will also be doing a combination of training online and, you know, just completing these different modules and short quizzes. And then you will eventually have the test at the very end. You do have multiple chances to take and pass this test, but it is a really big exam and um, your organization will want you to pass it and to be successful. So for me, I just like, I did not need that extra stress. I was kind of like, Oh my gosh, I just got done with school and now I feel like I'm in school all over again. So for me, this was a huge, huge con. Now, I don't wanna overwhelm you or discourage you. All of this is totally possible and then some. And if you are really enjoying your time in the OR, then it will all be worth it. Or if you're someone who knows you're gonna end up there, then all of these things are worth it and you should absolutely invest in yourself and dedicate that time to learning. My other piece of advice to give to you is to give yourself a lot of grace. This stuff is hard. You are going to be unfamiliar with it. It's going to feel very foreign at first, but eventually it will feel like second nature. And you will find that you may even be teaching some physician's assistants or people that are helping out your surgeons. You'll be teaching them sterile technique too. So at some point you're going to be very proficient in what you do. Give yourself a ton of time to learn sterile technique. Give yourself time to be familiar with the OR. You know, this this stuff takes so long, which you will get it. If it's something you're truly passionate about, you'll become so awesome. And at some point you'll get to the point where you're setting up surgeries all on your own, not even asking for help. And you'll be like, wait, how did I get here? So just believe in yourself, you guys, you can do it. This last part is kind of like a trigger warning for some people. I think this is really important to point out and I haven't heard anybody actually talk about this yet. You are gonna be exposed to some pretty sad stuff in the operating room. And I have to put this out there because no one told me or warned me about this and you know, had I known, it is possible I would have, again, chosen a different specialty right off the bat. There's times where you're going to be doing oncology cases or cancer cases, and at some point you might extract a piece of specimen, you guys will send it down to the lab, and then you will wait in that room for laboratory to call back up and let you know whether that specimen is positive or negative for cancer, knowing that, you know, that specific patient would later on then get told this horrendous, life-changing news. This was really, really hard for me to grasp, and a lot of times it changed the entire course of my day, I would find myself thinking about it quite a bit after work. You know, these things can affect you. I mean, as nurses, we see a lot of sad stuff. It's not always sunshine and rainbows. You know, like we, we did sign up to be there in people's darkest times. And I think there's something so beautiful and so special about that. At the same time, this kind of stuff is very sad and you just don't know how you're going to deal with it until you have no choice but to deal with it. I just want to kind of 
you know, put that out there. You have the opportunity to be someone's light and that's a really awesome thing. But at the same time, please take care of yourself and, you know, give yourself the time that you need to heal from some of these things because they're tough. They're, they're tough to see. So that's my trigger warning for you. Um, I'm sure you will be a badass and you'll be so good and awesome if the OR is right for you. And if not, I truly, truly hope that you find where your heart lies and that might be in a totally different specialty. Maybe it's not even nursing at all, but Regardless, listen to your heart and you will always be put on the right path. Please take everything I say very lightly. This is only my experience. I just think it's so great that we have the ability to share our experiences with each other online. I think it's an awesome way to kind of get information that you might not get elsewhere. And what better way to hear about an experience such as the operating room other than to hear it from people who have actually worked there. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, I would love to hear some of your thoughts, some of your questions. Feel free to leave anything like that down below. Let me be your resource. I'm here to help you. Please like and subscribe for more nursing related content and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.